Reese, y'all, brother Rich. I uh, want to give Blue, Pan, Blue Pill the opportunity to speak. A lot of people seen the pictures yesterday, him in handcuffs. So I just want the brother to speak and tell us side of the story about uh, what went down. Peace, family. Uh, peace to you and yours. Uh, yesterday, incident popped off. Union Square, I went out there to cover the uh, New York City rally for our brother Freddie Gray. All right, the Boston protests or what have you. There was a New York chapter. They wanted their voice to be heard. And as media, we have a responsibility to cover these events. You know what I'm saying? I got tired of seeing what I was looking at online and things of that nature. And I felt that I wanted to be in the streets with the people. Once I got to Union Square, there was a large gathering of people. Probably, you know, a few hundred people were gathered there. And they were broadcasting on the speakers for the very first time I'd never seen a NYPD vehicle with a speaker attached to it and this speaker was loudly broadcasting that nobody was allowed to march in the streets okay you couldn't protest and impede traffic and things of that nature and they had other people handing out leaflets informing the people that had gathered there that they were no longer allowed to um, you know, peacefully, right, walk in the streets and protest. Now, from what I understand, that's called civil disobedience. You know what I'm saying? From what I understand, that we have a right to assemble, we have a right to speech, we have a right to protest, you know? But apparently, after the dude from Baltimore came to New York in December and killed the police, right, they changed a whole bunch of things with de Blasio, and I guess these were, this is one of the first times that they chose to implement this particular degree of, uh, you know, them rolling out these new rules. So, as the protests progressed into the evening, it became sweltering, and it was probably a few thousand people there now, all right? So, I'm taking pictures taking a post of the people in the protest and what they're saying. There was a lot of young women there. They were holding up banners, you know. They were protesting, they were just letting their voice be heard, you know what I'm saying? They were being very vocal. And, um, you know, like I said, as a member of the press, I was capturing all of this footage. I also was waiting for word from one of my partners who was bringing the camera down, okay? We was gonna do interviews and things of that nature. The brother necessarily, uh, he never showed, he called me, he didn't show up at, at, at that particular time, but he called me, said that he was en route. So, I see a large contingency of people now moving towards the street, okay? So I'm like, cool, I need to be where the action is, you feel me? So, I'm now moving through the crowd, right? I get a phone call from my partner, I go on the sidewalk because I can't hear, everybody's on loudspeakers. And they're broadcasting their slogans and, you know, their marching mantras and things of that nature. So I go on the side. I'm on the phone hollering at my folks, telling me that he's en route. He's about four or five blocks away. I give him my location. I'm like, look, this is where we at right now. The march is moving down 17 between Broadway, headed to 5th. All right. I was like, I'm going to be in the mix, but call me. I got my phone on me. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to let you know where I'm at when you arrive. So I get back in the street amongst the people. So I'm walking in the street. You know, to the left of my eye, I see a gigantic red, black, and green flag. So I'm like, yo, let me see if that's any of the family. Because up until this point, you know, the demographics of this particular protest in this crowd were largely European. You know what I'm saying? There was a few speckles of quote unquote, you know, black and brown faces, faces throughout the crowd. Everybody else mainly was Europeans or what have you. So I go back, you know, I'm in the crowd, I'm moving through, you know what I'm saying? And I, I see I see I see the flags flying, or I see the flag flying for that matter. And I noticed that it's like a Caucasian flying the flag. 
So I'm bugging. I'm like, damn, this is something very different than I'm used to. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to absorb it and take it all in and make sense of what I'm seeing. And then right beyond that in my peripheral, you know, I see these other elderly Caucasian women and they're holding up banners talking about grandmothers for Black Lives Matter. And at this point, I'm like, well, God damn, like, you know, one part of me is like, damn, is, is, is the quote unquote movement being hijacked? You feel me? Or is just this the dynamics of, you know, the multiculturalism, you know, in the voice of New York? I saw uh, the similar demographics when we went to the Eric Gardner protests and things of that nature. So it wasn't so much of a culture shock, but. When I got the opportunity to just see these two different events back to back, this had my attention, all right? And what I catch out the right side of my eye was that the crowd that was right in front of me started moving backwards towards me. And it kind of like started moving at a pace where they were like running and scattering. And immediately I caught a flashback to an incident that happened to me on Monday when I was at a funeral at a church in Flatbush, Brooklyn. And they started shooting, okay? And it was the same way that, I, that the crowd kind of started moving back towards me and dispersing. But I knew from him, pop, pop, pop. You know what I'm saying? That it was time to move as well. In this particular case, I just moved to the side and let the people run by me. And I moved towards, all right, the body of people that kind of like was still in front of me. I wanted to make sure that it wasn't involved in these sisters that I had seen prior to that who were carrying their banners and moving in that, in that direction. So when I broke through the sea of bodies and seen what was going on, I see they got NYPD jumping on some protesters, wrestling them down, you know, putting the, um, the zip top, the, the zip ties and stuff on them. So I'm taking pictures of this. And the white shirt looks up, and before I know it, he's pointing his finger, and he's like, yo, get him! So, here comes seven or eight NYPDs, you feel me? Jumping on me, trying to wrestle me to the ground. And I locks my arms like this, and they, you know, pulling on my arms. I'm having flashbacks to 2007 when the same thing happened to me in Harlem. Only this time, you know, I wasn't in a chokehold, you know what I'm saying? And this time... To my benefit, I had all of these different uh, news outlets all around me taking footage of this. But I wasn't necessarily in the winds, you know what I'm saying? Um, I kind of like bent down to pick up my rings because my rings started falling. And then they tackled me down they on top of me, you feel me? And then one of them said, yo, he got a knife. Now I gotta make a split second decision. Whereas I'm like, okay, what do I have to win in this particular case versus what do I have to lose? You know what I'm saying? And what can be the possible outcome? The possible, out the possible outcome, you know, is like what, I'm gonna throw six or seven of them off of me and make a run for it? You know what I'm saying? And cut through Union Square and, and, and into the train and, and get up out of there? So I'm like, look. Whatever this process is, let's go with the flow of it rather than going against the flow of it. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm embarrassing these, uh, you know, supposedly the most brutal regime on the face of this planet. You know what I'm saying? They don't have they they can't have their way with me. The white shirt is asking me, please let us put the cuffs on you. Let us put the cuffs on you and stuff of that nature. And when I heard the dude talking about I got a knife, I'm like, all right, they're going to deal with this in either two or three or four different ways. You know what I'm saying? Mace, taser, gun, uh, batons, foot on the head, what have you. And I didn't really want any of those options. It wasn't worth it. You know what I'm saying? I'm asking, what am I being, uh, you know, apprehended and kidnapped for and things of that nature. I wasn't getting any answers. So they get my first hand and the zip, you know what I'm saying? And my second hand, I still got hold on one of the pieces of the jewelry. They start prying my fingers open and they start pulling on this ring. You know what I mean? Taking my ring off and what have you. 
and then my other ring dropped, and then, you know, they got this hand into the zip, and they tightened it, just put a tight grip on it, popped me up, marched me up out of there, all right? The minute I get up and I'm, you know, taken into what's going on and what have you, I look to my left, and the, uh, I don't want to call them officers because they're not officers. Officers are elected to office. You know what I'm saying? That's an oxymoron. So they're not officers. But let's say cop. You know, the cop to my left, I noticed. I looked on his lapel. And on his lapel, he had the number 44. All right? So I already know, based on my experience with this information and this number, I'm like, okay, I'm in control. You know? This is just something that I have to go through in terms of a particular journey where, you know, I, I, I don't know what's on the other end of the journey, but I know that I'm going on a journey and I know that I'm in control as opposed to it being a situation where I feel as if, you know, I'm in the most amount of danger and things of that particular nature. So I start giving the cop commands. I'm like, yo. I'm not moving or going nowhere without my stuff. Like, make sure that you get all of my things. He made sure that I had all my stuff. He put it in my bag. He was like, look, here goes your rings. You know what I'm saying? Here goes your phone. I was like, take it out of my bag and put it in my pocket. And he did what I told him to. So we get to the back of the van. And um, they try to take a picture of me, right? They're trying to take, they wanted to take a picture of me and him together. This is what they're doing. They're taking these digital photos. I don't know where these photos is going to. I'm like, I'm not taking no fucking pictures. Like, what is this? So I take my hood down. I put my hood down and they're like, put your head up, put your head up. But the cop wouldn't touch me. So he had to take a picture of the top of my head. They sent me in the back of the van, right? Now I'm in the back of the van. This... Uh, assumingly is the same type of van that Freddie Gray must have been in. You know what I'm saying? One of those those meat vans and the the, the the with the slippery sleets and the steel floors and what what have you and shit like that. So they strapped me in. Mind you, I still got my book bag on me with the zip things on my hand. So every time that I sit up, the pressure from my book bag is putting pressure on the zips, and the zips is cutting in with the fucking with the. Uh, with my wrist cuffs and it's just tearing into my skin and I'm in excruciating pain and I'm like, yo, like open up these zips. They got the door closed, they ain't trying to hear me out. So the other people that are seated with me in the back of this van, you know, they like, you all right? And I'm like, nah, I'm not all right. So I gotta bend over, I gotta like, you know, get the pressure of the book bag off of my hands so I'm not further cutting into my hands or what have you. So the brother to my left is like, don't you be in Harlem? And I'm like, yeah, I be in Harlem while I was good. And he was like, yo, I'm here because of you. I'm like, what you mean that you here because of me? And the young brother's like, yo, I be watching all of your stuff on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? And y'all inspired me to actually get out. And be about something in terms of being about change and being active, you know what I'm saying, rather than just being home and shit and observing this stuff from a distance. He said that he wasn't able to get anybody from his neighborhood. He's from Best Style. He wasn't able to get nobody from his neighborhood to actually come with him and participate in this particular level of protest or rally or things of that particular nature. But he decided that he was going to represent not only for himself but for his homies as well so they could see the sacrifice so, you know, they can see uh, him press, pressing the front line or what have you, and maybe they might be compelled to do the same. So I'm like, damn, like it's all hitting me like a ton of bricks. The irony of it all, you know what I'm saying? And the weight of the fact that with our words, we have ability to move people, you know what I'm saying? And we have ability to make people responsible. We have ability to make people responsive. And... You know, I told a young brother, well, I'm like, look, well, me and you is here together now. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, damn. And he's not going to see nobody else that he normally sees on them films or them tapes or what have you. Like, nobody else is going to be down here, you know, pressing the line and what have you. Whether protest is your thing or marching is your thing, you know what I'm saying, or being online is your thing, writing graffiti is your thing, creating art is your thing. 
whatever it is, I'm not in a position to tell you what you should or shouldn't be doing. You feel me? But I also know at this particular point that people need to see us. You know what I mean? When I turn on my TV and I see the youth in Baltimore and they're on camera, when I see the youth that are marching, when I see the youth expressing themselves, you know what I'm saying? Y'all don't want to see the youth riot. Y'all don't want to see the youth march. Y'all don't want to see the youth talk to Wolf Blitz a particular way. Y'all don't want to see the youth talk to Geraldo a particular way. What do y'all want the youth to do? Y'all want the youth to play basketball? Y'all want them to swim? To get the fucking pain on? Like, what do you want them to do? You know what I'm saying? So, people are finding different outlets to express themselves however they see best fit. So, this young brother was, you know, doing that, I, 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 I suppose. You know what I'm saying? Now, there was another brother to my right. He was able to work his way out of the straps. You know what I'm saying? He had skinny wrists, so he slipped out of the straps. He's like, yo, brother, you need me to do anything for you? You know? I was like, yo, take the strap and push it up so I could get it totally over the, the metal wrist as opposed to on my, I mean, the metal uh, bracelet as opposed to on my wrist. So he did that, and it kind of, like, eased the pain. And I was able to sit up, you know? Then I was like, get my phone. So he got my phone out of my pocket. I called Red. I told Red what was going on. Coincidentally enough, Red just so happened to be on the same block. He's like, Spirit had told him to come down to the rally and even to come over to that block. I hadn't spoken to him prior to that. So he ended up on the same block. I told him what time it was. I told him to be on guard. I might need him or what have you. So we went through that process, you know. I had told the dude, I was like, yo, take a picture of us back here because I'm going to use this picture to tell the story that I'm about to tell because I knew I was going to write a blog on it, you know. So we took a little picture and shit, put the phone away, you know. About an hour after that, we got transported. They took us to Central Booking. You know, once we get to Central Booking, they got a whole command center set up with all of these white shirts and all of these, um, you know, quote unquote like bureaucrats, the dudes in the suits and shit like that, you know. And they just got this long line of police awaiting all of the um you know the uh the captives, you know, the prisoners as they was referring to us and things of that nature. So mind you, you know, get to the joint, they put the little uh process through. I don't take no prints, I don't take no None of that stupidness, you know, so they throw me in the pens And we get in the pens at first, it's like 30 dudes, right? Now, I would say it was 15-15 It was 15 Europeans And it was 15 of us melanated, you know what I'm saying? Consistent of all the grays and shades of melanin, alright? Now I fall back and I started like Listening to the conversations that was taking place, you know what I'm saying? And I'm blown away by the political savviness of the dialogue that I'm listening to. And I'm like, hold on. You know, you would think that um, you was on a quote-unquote conscious blog talk radio show or something. You would think that you was on one of our most, you know, famous corners where a lot of this dialogue takes place. But I'm in the pens sitting around, you know, what I can clearly see is... You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, some doctors, some lawyers, some accountants, you know what I'm saying? Uh, some homosexuals, you feel me? Um, all different degrees and variances of our people, how we come in different shades and packaged and what have you, you know what I'm saying? The voice of the city, you know what I'm saying? A true representation of what our city looks like, you know what I mean? And. Throughout the night, like I said, they just kept bringing in hordes and hordes of people. And by the end of the night, it was like 100 plus people in this particular unit. Anybody that been to Central Book and know how big that cell is, you know. And um, there was just a strong sense of, 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 of brotherhood throughout this entire experience. You know what I'm saying? There was a strong dialogue about politics. You know what I'm saying? Uh, one of the gay brothers was like, yo, I just got back from Palestine learning guerrilla warfare. You know what I'm saying? He was militant minded, believe it or not. Like, if you could remove yourself from kind of like thinking about what they do and their personal lifestyle in their bedrooms and you just listen to the conversation that they was having, 
He was like, yo, these dudes, you know what I'm saying, is ready for whatever's about to jump. You know what I'm saying? They're ready for, you know, they got organizational skills. They have a coherent idea about politics in terms of saying, yo, this is a de Blasio policy. We got to attack City Hall. We got to attack. We got to get rid of Bratton. We got, you know what I mean? The niggas is talking about police. You know what I'm saying? And not bureaucrats and, and, and not politics at its upper echelon. It's just like the more and more that I listen to us, and when I say us, I mean car carrying members of the conscious community, we just like five, ten years late. You know what I'm saying? In terms of where this conversation has to go, you know what I mean? And how to create effective change. And everybody else seems to be lightning years ahead. So there was Europeans in there that. This was their fifth and sixth time being locked up. You know what I'm saying? They was having a conversation about, look, our lives don't matter if black lives don't matter. You know what I'm saying? If we got to do this a hundred times, so what? You know, look at what Malcolm, uh, what, what, what uh, Martin Luther King did. You know what I'm saying? They had referenced the fact that it was like, this is what was done in Selma in regards to, you know, when you see Caucasians get locked up on camera that has a tendency to attract uh, world attention as opposed to they was like, if it was just y'all getting locked up, they was like, that wouldn't be making the world news. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit is not gonna go viral. So we are the ones that are come and put our lives and our necks on the line to have your story heard. So it was just this sense of people talking about collectively how we work together to use one another's platform to make the message that much more louder and have it being heard. You know what I'm saying? They were trying to make the point that this is something that can't be done one-sidedly. You know what I'm saying? And it was a very interesting concept that was being made and it was an interesting question that was being posed. You know what I'm saying? And I will pose that question to you as well. Is this something that we can do on our own? Do you have a plan? You know what I'm saying? And if you do have a plan, can you please bring it to the forefront so we can start implementing it? You know what I'm saying? Because I would like to see it myself. And I would like to share it with the people who need it the most. You feel me? Um, but it's like, yeah, you know, I just have this funny feeling that niggas is full of shit. You know what I'm saying? And they would rather point fingers and sit on their laurels than actually get up and do something. Like I said, I'm not pushing you out there to march or protest. Uh, you know, because obviously we see that there's PSYOX operations going on. But turning on the fucking TV is a PSYOP operation. All right? Going to Key Food is a PSYOP operation. Sending your child to school is a PSYOP operation. You ended up in a hospital is a PSYOP operation. You getting your diabetes shot as a PSYOP operation. All right? You going to church as a PSYOP operation. So I don't know what in society these days, you coming outside and they spraying chemtrails is a PSYOP operation. So what isn't a PSYOP operation? Okay, your ass looking at loving hip hop is a PSYOP operation. So I don't know how you can get away from the experimentation that's being done. This is a prison planet. And in particular, this particular country is a, 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 a prison colony. You feel me? So what isn't PSYOP in terms of your day-to-day? -day? You turn on the radio, that's a PSYOP operation. You know what I'm saying? You rolling up your blunt is a PSYOP operation. So, you know, I just want us to remove ourselves from constantly saying, yo, this is false flag, this is PSYOPs, this is this, this is that. What about talking about what we're going to do? What about talking about how we're going to remove ourselves from this particular situation? We do live in a fishbowl, you know what I'm saying? So if you're not talking about jumping out of that fishbowl and finding a new stream, how are you going to get along in a fishbowl with other fish? You know what I'm saying? And, and like, is, is, is the conscious community just the new elitism? You know what I'm saying? Are we for the people? Are we with the people? Are we against the people? Are we better with the people or are we the people? And if, if we are the people, then when are we standing with the people? Do the people know about us? How do they know about us? You know what I'm saying? So we can't just be revolutionaries. You feel me? We got to get off of that. At some point, we're going to have to get into these streets. The ladies and the babies are scared to death and they need us. You know what I'm saying? 
They need us. They need us for security. They need us even if they showing up to the marches because I've seen a lot of women at the marches. They need protection. They need to know that you're there. They need to know that you care. You know what I'm saying? They need to look right and left and see you there. Not online pointing fingers at them talking about how crazy you are and how ineffective this is and we don't need this and we don't need that. They showing up because they fed up. You know what I'm saying? And there's nobody there to protect them. So that makes me very discomforted. You feel me? Um, like I said, I walked out of that situation with, with, with new eyes. I learned a lot. I seen a lot. You know, they had a common theme in there. It's like whatever happens to one of us happens to all of us. You know what I mean? There's a brother that had got beat down, um, you know, prior to all of us coming into that particular situation. They beat him up in the street. You know what I mean? Everybody held the dude down. You know what I'm saying? They were trying to put the beast on him during that situation. And everybody banded together and held him down. There was a lot of camaraderie in there. You know what I'm saying? I, ha I don't see that in the conscious community. You feel me?